Hello gentlemen and ladies, uh, this video is intended to be a stereo retrofit tutorial for specifically Thomas uh, buses that are formerly school buses or just Thomas buses in general. Um, some of the, the ideas behind this could be applied to other bodies such as bluebirds, wings, um, carpenters, wards, you know, whatever bus you might own but uh, it'll be specifically geared towards Thomas's. So, and it kind of outlines how my stereo was installed. Um, so first off on the panel here, I've removed the, the screws. And, uh, down below here, this cover here is where the factory uh, Thomas stereo location would be if it had a PA or stereo. Uh, these are just standard Phillips head screws. Those two screws right there, these, uh, as I recall, there was nothing attached to them. I think there may have been like a mic holder or something attached to them at one time. But uh, at this moment, they're just two screws filling holes. So, um, But this little compartment here, this whole width, it's actually its own compartment. It's not, it's separate from the compartment under here. So I ran my stereo speaker wiring it all comes into this compartment directly behind the stereo I have two terminal blocks back there one for front and one for rear speakers uh, and then um, and so we'll open this up and right there is the the uh, body solenoid where the big thick red wire right there that's the the positive battery cable and so the yellow wire coming off of it there that you see, this one right here, is actually the constant power stereo wire. And then there's a red wire that comes off uh, this one right here. This one is the switched power. And as you can see, I'm running other things off of it too. That's a separate terminal block for other things. Um, and those supply power to the stereo. Uh, uh, also supply, this is the amp power wire right here, it's on the switch side of the body solenoid, so, and we'll go into detail on that in a second, we'll just do the basic stereo wiring right now and then come back to the amp. So, um, what I did is, the wiring all comes out down here, there's an extra horn button there, um, and it goes up this pillar here, and those are all held in by Phillips head screws. Um, this cover right here, as well as the wiring covers all the way down both sides of the bus, as you can see, I've put regular Phillips head screws in them. They used uh, this style screw, which looks like a Phillips head, but in actuality, it uses, I think Thomas calls it a quadric screw, and it uses a number two square bit. So for the wiring that goes down the driver's side of the bus, it just comes out and up and then it goes down the main wiring loom all the way down the driver's side of the bus. Quite simple. Um, for the passenger side wiring it goes up over the driver's window and then it goes right here across the windshield. I was Since this panel opens up I could reach back there and fish it across. And then uh, this corner of the bus is actually connected so you can stick your hand back here and come around the side of the windshield. Uh, and this panel right here, it just all these screws over the door panel there. And there's a few underneath the uh, the uh, the head head foam, whatever you want to call it, keep people from bumping their heads. So that all has to come off. And then from there to here, there's just this little piece right here that I drilled a hole straight through so that I could fish the wiring through because those two pieces do not uh, interconnect. So I had to drill a hole and run the wiring all the way back there uh, down this side. And that's how I got the wiring to the passenger side of the bus. Um, as for the speakers, so I have six speakers, three on each side. The front two, the boxes are made very similar. Uh, similarly, it's just scrap pieces of plywood stapled together and then that's uh, that's seat cover material 
Um, for those of you guys that own Thomas's or perhaps any bus, uh, what the school district did here is they had a company, a commercial company, come in and recover the seats. And so when they did that, um, rather than taking the torn, messed up seat covers off, they just put new ones over them because it takes half the time. You just put the new one on, staple it, and you're done. You don't have to worry about disposing of the old one. So I was able to go through and find some seats that have been recovered and take the bad covers out from underneath, and that's what we used for the speaker box covers because it doesn't matter if they're ripped already because, you know, they're going to get cut up. And so we just covered the whole... The speaker box uh, is obviously empty on the back side. It's just, you know, basically front and sides and top and bottom, and that's it. Um, and then we drilled a hole in the top of this panel underneath the speaker boxes, ran the wiring up from behind, and ran it to speakers, and then mounted the speakers into the box. It's quite easy. We used a couple angle brackets uh, inside the speaker box to mount the box to the uh, the bus body, So and then some sheet metal screws. So, uh, the front two speaker boxes are the same. Now we'll go to the back here. And the rear speaker boxes are just a little bit different because they point forward. And this, believe it or not, gives the bus a really good sound. And it looks like I got that speaker cover on upside down. Whoops, I have to fix that. This one's on the right side up. Didn't even realize that. I've had that other speaker out a couple of times. Um, but we did have to make a contour to go over this uh, rail here. So um, the way we have it wired up is these two back speakers, uh, driver's side is left and passenger side is right. And that's the same with the front two speakers. And they are both the, f the front two speakers, those two speakers, and those two speakers are wired as front. And then these two speakers are mounted as rear and their directions are reversed. So the passenger side speaker is left and the driver side speaker is right. So it kind of gives like a crisscross effect to all the sound and it makes for a very interesting and clean sound throughout the bus. All right, so that's that that covers the stereo and uh speakers. So um next if you want to put a sub and an amp in the sub and amp wiring all comes down here. Um, some of these red wires do other things, but these are the power wires for the sub. And I forget what this blue wire does. It's something to do with the sub as well. Um, so they come down, and we'll go to C8 right here, I think is where I put the amp. Yes, I did. And uh, I took just two scrap pieces of wood and screwed them to the bottom of the seat and then screwed the amp to it and then you can see where uh, these are okay these are not the power speakers these are the audio speakers from the stereo or I'm sorry the audio wires from the, the stereo they plug into the amp the red wire there is the uh, power wire I think I have a sep the ground wire going somewhere else and then there's all the wiring to it and then these two wires here are the speaker wires themselves that go to the um, subwoofer. So um, by mounting the amp on these uh, pieces of wood, it allows it to get some ventilation underneath it since it will get hot. And this is just a 300 watt amp. This is a cheap, I've actually got a better amp at home which I'm going to try to install in the next few days. Um, but for this video's purpose, it'll work just fine. So, and it, a 300 watt amp for just one subwoofer makes a lot of noise. So the wiring just kind of goes along the chair rail down there. I got a little lazy with it. Um, and then it goes, it comes out here and goes underneath the floor to the back of the bus. There's my mess. Okay, and then the, the subwoofer is mounted back here. And if you'll notice, it's mounted pointing towards the wall. And the reason I have it mounted pointing towards the wall is because it reverbs off the entire bus body. And so the way the acoustics are set up in here, it, it reverbs off that that wall and just you hear it way better 
from where it is here than, say, underneath one of the seats in the front of the bus. Um, some of you are asking probably, well, how do you know? Well, I experimented with a few spots. Um, I put the sub here at one time and tried pointing it all different directions, and I got decent sound for it. Then I have a friend who has a party bus. Uh, it's a Wayne. All of his, that doesn't really matter, but all of his seats are turned sideways against the wall, which is another thing that I plan on doing to this very soon. Um, with some of the seats anyways, and about here, this would be the third, fourth row. On the passenger side, he had the sub on the floor pointing towards the aisle. While the sub did make some awesome noise, he was powering it with a 1,000 watt amp. And his 1,000 watt amp, with that, it was a 12, this is a 10, uh, with that setup, he was making, actually, he, he couldn't make the kind of sound that I do. It's, it's quite impressive. You would think with this being so far back from the driver that if you're sitting up front, you can't hear it. You can hear it just fine. So, that's my, uh, my, uh, uh stereo design for Thomas Built Buses. Um, like I said, this could, this would work too for Bluebirds, I'm sure. I know Bluebirds have a, a flat panel here. The Waynes have kind of a panel that comes out, as do the Carpenters. Um... I'm not sure about the wards, so, you know, but for those of you guys that own Thomas's, you know, this should help you out quite a bit, and as for you guys with any bus. Anyway, thanks for watching, and, uh, enjoy. Oh, also, another quick thing, if you're looking to put some party lights in, uh, I know I showed this in one of my previous videos, but these lights going down the side wall on the speaker line are party lights, as opposed to the overheads right there. There's only three rows of them here in the bus, or three sets of them, front, middle, and back. And I kept those as white lights, and these lights are just their standard Weldon second-hand uh, uh, dome lights that I've reconfigured as party lights. And they don't do anything fancy. They just, they have LED bulbs in them, and they just come on steady, but it makes for a nice glow instead of uh, for a Instead of mounting rope light, because I know a lot of people like to put the rope light in these things. And the rope light, while it does look cool, the 12-volt uh, rope light is very expensive per foot. And the bulbs for these lights are just standard 1156 bulbs. Yes, that's a Bluebird logo there. Uh, they're only like like four or five bucks on eBay. And, uh, and they put out just as much light at night in here as do as does the rope light and it's a cheaper alternative and all I had to do again was take these two rails down and I what I did is I had to cut the holes individually in the roof panels or ceiling panels I should say and then I just ran a wire like a piece of power line basically you know hung it like a power line from front to back and tie wrapped it in various uh, spots to keep it from sagging you know, down both sides. Then I ran a connector and I scotch locked with the little suitcase connectors on, you know, uh, my supply line going across the windshield here and down on both sides. My two supply lines I scotch locked or suitcase connected to the, the wire. And then each light I just ran, I suitcase connected a, a feed wire going to the light from the main wire there. So. It was nice, it was simple, and it turned out good. And then as for the lights, uh, I replaced my on-off switch with a heater switch, a high-low switch. So the high side is my regular dome lights, and the low side is the dimmer party lights. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, good luck with your stereo installs.